Good morning. I'm glad that you're here for this online Bible study on Sunday, July 9th. I hope that you'll grab your Bible, a Kindle reader, or a tablet, or an app on your phone, and follow along with you. Today we are looking in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 22 through 32, and it's all about Jesus and the Prince of Demons. And there are several points in here, several good things for us to learn from, and there's also a promise here for us. So I, again, I, I'm glad you're here. I hope that you will like and subscribe, and so you'll get notifications when we po post a video or a new Bible study. And... Uh, Invite a friend to watch with you or, or send them the link, and I think they'll appreciate it. So today, we're going to begin with verses 22 through 24, and it's all about Jesus and Beelzebub, which is the prince of demons. Then they brought to him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. They couldn't even call Jesus by his name. They said, This fellow. Now Jesus, when he walked the earth as both God and man, showed his authority over nature and over the power of darkness by the miracles that he did. The religious leaders of the day, their power was threatened by Jesus. So they questioned the integrity of the supernatural things, the miracles and the things that he did because the miracles was a demonstration of where Jesus received his power from, or who he received his power from. And throughout our gospel, people who were possessed by demons usually suffered from physical signs. And in the case of the man here, he could not talk, he could not see, and this was caused by a demon. And so Jesus performed miraculous healings, both to release people from the physical ailments, the physical symptoms that, that, that were hurting them, but he also did them to show people that he was doing these miracles by God's authority. And once he did those things, the people asked questions like they did here in verse 23, could this be the son of David. Meaning, could it be that Jesus is the son of David, who is the Messiah that was predicted to come? And of course, we know the answer is yes. But this was threatening to the religious leaders. It was, it was threatening to their power. It was threatening to their position. So they wanted to discredit Jesus by questioning where his miracles were coming from. So they said that these miracles were because of the power of Beelzebub. And Beelzebub means Lord of the house. But Beelzebub is really the prince of demons. And this is a name that fits with the next verses in the, pas in the passage which is all about a house divided. And so Beelzebub, the Lord of the house, Jesus explains the problem with a house divided. Verses 25 through 29. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your people drive them out? 
So then, they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. And then verse 29. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can plunder the house. Have you ever played the game of, of tug, and, tug of war? You have two teams holding on to a rope, and they're both pulling. Now, if they were both equal, it wouldn't be any fun because you would just keep pulling and, and nothing would, would happen. But the object of tug of war, of course, is to get one side to fall. And so Jesus is saying, if you have a house divided against itself, that eventually is what's going to happen. There'll be a civil war, there'll be a fight, there'll be strife, and both sides will, will collapse on each other and nothing will be accomplished. There is no working together in a game of tug of, tug of war or in a house divided. And so when the Pharisees tried to disparage Jesus and his miracle he did here, Jesus said in verse 25, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. And Jesus makes it very clear here, to cast out a demon was to weaken Satan's power over and in the world. So, if Satan is the one giving power to Jesus, who Jesus opposed him in every way, this meant that Satan would be supporting an attack on himself. So, why would Satan do that? And then he adds the point, if the religious leaders were to cast out a demon, did that mean that they were also working with Satan? And so Jesus tells the religious leaders, he tells the people that the kingdom of God has come upon you. And remember this, the, the powers of darkness cannot make a move against anyone without the Lord Jesus' permission. Now, we know the powers of evil, the powers of Satan, want to attack and destroy the kingdom of God. But Satan is limited by God from doing that. He can only do what God gives permission, and sometimes God gives permission for testing reasons. He cannot attack the people of God, the believers, without God's permission. And remember this, that the Lord protects believers. Verses 30 through 32. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you, every kind of sin or slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. There is and cannot be any double-mindedness when it comes to Jesus. You cannot remain neutral with Jesus. You are either fully devoted to his values and his mission, or you are passively or actively his enemy. Jesus makes it very clear that there are lines between the kingdom of God and the powers of darkness. And one of these is found in verse 31. Blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. We know this as the unforgivable sin. And it means a deliberate decision to reject God's prompting by the Holy Spirit on your heart. If you have a guilty conscience, when you do something wrong, it means you have not committed the unpardonable sin or the unforgivable sin. 
But those who commit evil, who commit wrong things and have no prompting, no guilty conscience, no guilt about the things they have done, most likely they have completely and totally rejected God and have committed the unpardonable sin. See, if the Holy Spirit lives in you, you will not be committing blasphemy against God. You will not be committing all kinds of evil against the people of God. The presence of the Holy Spirit will keep the believer from crossing from that point to a point of no return, of rejecting God. And so what Jesus is saying here, when we have unity, amazing things can and will happen. And this is why God wants a unified kingdom. This is why God wants churches working to God, working together. See, when we serve the Lord only, when we resist the devil, we can bring churches to unity. And once we bring churches to unity, when that happens, we can bring God's unity to our society. The bottom line is there are two kingdoms, the kingdom of light, which is God's kingdom, and the kingdom of darkness, which is the devil's kingdom. And a kingdom is an area or a group of people ruled by the same monarch or ruler. So we can either be ruled by the Lord Jesus or we can be ruled by Satan. And so those two kingdoms are at war with each other for our souls. And we cannot serve both kingdoms. Either we are for God or we are against him. There is no in-between. There are no shades of gray. There is no middle ground. We must make a choice. And our future depends on it. So instead of being divided against each other, we need to be unified with each other, and we need to be following the Lord Jesus. Don't forget, here in Paris, at 10, 10 a.m., in the building, we will have live worship. We will also have communion, and we will have the service streamed live on Facebook and YouTube, and you can participate online in communion if you gather your supplies and follow along with us. But I hope to see you here in person. I hope you invite a friend, and if you can't, invite a friend to watch. Have a great Sunday.